This video is brought to you by patreon.com backslash sip the tally. Join the Patreon for exclusive vids, early release vids, on screen shout outs, access to members only giveaways, and added monthly tally points. Hop on over to patreon.com backslash sip to tally to see which one of the four tiers fits for you. Now let's get started. Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to take a look at three things that came across my desk. And it's really one thing that's probably going to take up most of this video. And it's Matter BK signing his extension. Four years, $98 million. We're going to talk about the extension. And we're going to talk about what it means. And then we're going to kind of close it out with a few other things that crossed my desk. Well, I dropped a video the other day talking about what I feel like we should do or how we should handle Matter BK. And I even still have those notes here. I said that um, we should either get a contract done with Matter BK or let him walk. Well, we ended up tagging him. And I really felt like we shouldn't have tagged him. And I'm going to explain why. Because it wasn't for sure thing that we could have gotten a deal done before free agency. But they did get a deal done, which is good. Because now we're players in free agency now. By getting the deal done before Monday, we can now start to talk to other free agents and, and but we'll get a, we'll get into that a little later. But we got it done, got they tagged him, which gave him time to work on a deal. And the, the main thing was they got a deal done before the free agent window opened up. So what it is is four years, ninety eight million dollars, and you know, everybody, every Ravens content creator has put it out there that what the the, the gist of the deal is. But I went to go find out like the cap hits for each year. And so this is what I found out. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, if you find it somewhere different. But this is what I found out on the cap hits. So in year one, Matter BK's cap hit is $12.25 million, which is good for us because now we can kind of finagle. Because before, before the, the deal was done, when he was on the franchise tag, we were negative $9 million-ish dollars. So with him not being at a $21 million cap hit, that kind of puts us right around even-ish or so. I'm not sure the exact number, but him only being a $12 million cap hit, that's going to really, really, really help us out in year one to try to be able to do some other things with free agency. So year two, $18.75 million cap hit. Not bad. That puts him right under the $20 million hit. And if he continues to elevate his play, he'll be worth it. Year three and four, that number jumps. So if he continues to grow and get better and better and better, by the time he hits year three and four of this deal, and I don't know if they're going to try to restructure by then or what, but he'll be $33.25 million in year three and $33.75 million in year four, which will be a crazy, crazy, crazy number for a defensive tackle, which is the kind of number that uh, kind of numbers that Chris was trying to get. <laughs> and it's, it's approaching quarterback type numbers. But I also went up to over the cap. And they had an article on there where um, they were just actually breaking down the um, signing. And I'll kind of read to you what they said. They said the Ravens defensive tackle Justin Matter BK cashed in big today, signed a massive four year, $98 million contract extension. And it says, here's the running cash flow. Uh, breakdown compared to the top 10 players at the position. And they said the Ravens did something they normally, normally don't do. They say this, and they got a list of like the years. And so for year one for Justin Matter BK, he's getting $31 million. And this is his cap number plus his bonuses, if I'm not mistaken. $31 million for Justin Matter BK. Year two, it you know, year one plus what he's going to get, $53.5 million. And in year three, he'll, he'll be the guy at $75.5 million. And then year four, if he gets to it, $98 million. It says, this break. This is a breaking structure from what the Ravens have done with many of their players where the Ravens have often offered massive cap, cash flows in the first full year of their contract in return for a discount of sorts on the overall value of the contract. That did not happen here as matter BK's first year salary will be tied for the fifth at their position in the line with the market. So normally they don't give players what they're worth early in the contract. They try to even it out or push it toward the back end. Well, this is, in this case, Matter BK got what he's worth. And I'll give you the list of names that are right there with him. 
Matabike, Quinn Williams, Aaron Donald, Jeffrey Simmons, Dexter Lawrence, and Deron Payne. All those guys are $31 million and up right there with Justin Matabike. It says in year two, we see a bigger shift where he jumps everyone other than Aaron Donald. This is a pretty significant jump compared to the other players in my estimation and was driven due, dri driven due to the franchise tag resulting in a $48.6 million payout over two years if applied the second time. The Ravens likely needed to be over a certain number over to make that worthwhile given the free agency in every two years. And then the third paragraph, he outpaces the non-Donald market by $5 million through 2026 before upcoming 2027 to deliver the final AYP. That's a strong structure for the player they will that he will earn significantly more than his peers through three years. And then he'll be in a position to ask for extension, assuming he continues to play well before the lower value year kicks in. So they did something different with Matabike. Normally they try to squeeze the juice out of a player. They gave Matabike market value up front. Um, more, well, more than market value or other than Aaron Donald in year two. And it kind of evened out year three and four. I don't even think he'll get to year four. I think if he continues to play as well, they'll renegotiate and try to extend them there too. Because if I'm not mistaken, he's only 26. So this will put him at 29 in year three. And if he's still playing at a high level, they'll try to renegotiate that thing. And if he doesn't, then you know how that goes. They'll cut him or trade him or, or do some other things to try to get rid of that, that cap hit. So how does this help the Ravens? And I was kind of alluding to that earlier. So now with him not being on that, that $21 million or $22 million, whatever the cap number was when he was franchise tagged, you can now go out and seek other help at other positions. One for me, running back. And I'm going to kind of go back to my plan initially. Go get you some running back help. One of those top five guys that I mentioned, whatever day that was, Thursday, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, um, Saquon Barkley, Tony Pollard, DeAndre Swift, to name a few. Kick the tires on those running backs. See who you can get. Get you a dynamic guy to go along with Lamar in the backfield. Because right now, the only two guys that are under contract for the Baltimore Ravens as far as running backs are Keith Mitchell, who we know who's hurt right now. Don't know when he's going to come back, if he comes back this season. And Justice Hill. Dark horse to re-sign is J.K. Dobbins. Gus Hill, I mean, uh, Gus Edwards, maybe. I think Gus is done, though. I think. But kick the tires on those top five guys. Can we afford eight to ten million, I think? Go over ten? Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. But I think anywhere from eight to ten on one of those five guys, you should be good. You should be good, I think. My, my personal favorite, you all know, out of those five is, is Josh Jacobs. Uh, would Derrick Henry fit? I think so. I'd rather have Jacobs or Saquon or, or Swift or Tony Pollard, but I wouldn't be opposed to be to um, Derrick Henry. I wouldn't be opposed to it, but he would he would be not my top choice. Um, just, and mainly because of age. Mainly because of age. There's nothing he did wrong to make me not dislike him or whatnot. It's just mainly because of age, and I would rather multiple years with him playing with Lamar rather than him kind of hit that cliff and fall off. And he may not fall off the cliff. That's me projecting and assuming. So that's just my personal opinion on it. You can put in the comment section whether you agree or disagree. And while you're down in the comment section, hit that like button too. Hit the like button. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and do that. And make sure you smash the bell so you can be here when the rest of these videos drop throughout the offseason. Because free agency starts tomorrow, uh, Monday. Uh, well, the tampering period starts Monday. Free agency actually starts Wednesday. But we all know it starts Monday. Really, and I think it's already started because uh, I saw some people, some signings being mentioned, and how are they being mentioned already? I know re-signings maybe and trades, yeah. And speaking of trades, Jerry Judy just got traded too to the Browns for a fifth and a sixth, if I'm not mistaken, hiring robbery. But I digress. Back to what we talking about. All right, so, and I'll, I'll just end it with this right here. So we talked about Matter BK getting paid and how that works out and how that helps the Ravens. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the Ravens recently got awarded an extra compensatory pick. So, and just to end this video on out, we're just going to talk about the different picks that the Ravens got. We have a first round pick, which is pick number 30. Second round pick, which is pick 62. Third round pick, pick number 93. 
two fours, which is 129 and 134, a fifth, which is 156, and two sevens, which is 228 and 250. Now, these picks are imperative for Eric DaCosta. And so that this is what? One, two, three, four, five, eight picks. I personally feel like EDC has to knock five of these eight out the park. Five. Five of these eight guys got to do their darn thing next year. At, at, at what position? I can't pinpoint that and say, at o, well, yeah, one of them got to be an O-line. We got eight picks. I think two of these picks got to be O-linemen. One got to be a receiver. One got to be a young running back. Now that's, now, that's four. Now, I don't know what the other four are going to be. Maybe an edge. Maybe another linebacker. Maybe a safety. I can't count. <laughs> Maybe another safety. So, that's seven. Uh, but definitely the two old linemen, a receiver, and a running back. Definitely those four I think we should have. And um, put in the comment section what you think we should draft and even who you think we should draft um, with those picks. Mainly those first three, uh, number 30, 62, and 93. And if you have been having any mock drafts, who, who have you guys been picking up with your mock drafts? I've been dropping mine slowly but surely once a week. And um, they've been fun, man. They've been fun really putting it out there, especially with the, the class of tackles that we've been putting out there. And this is what I got for you today, man. It is March the 9th, 2024. I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. So like the video if you like what you see. Comment in the comment section. I hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these drop. And I'll see you when I see y'all, man. Peace and love.